Hello everyone, I hope you're having a wonderful start to the week. We're really excited for Easter coming up this weekend, we really are. aren't we? I'm Miranda, this is my YouTube channel, and my mum Donna is joining me today. Hello! Because we've got a special Easter themed episode where we're going to be decorating our Easter tree, talking about our favourite Easter traditions. Yes. And also sharing some Easter books with you. So I hope you'll enjoy this. We have the perfect day for it today. We're so lucky. We really are. The sun is shining. It's really, it's the warmest day of the year so yes. far. It's yes. Amazing. And we're feeling so spring-like. Yes, very so much this so. This is wonderful. I've got lots of decorations here that I know you can't see, but I have filmed some close-ups of them. I've got these little... Gisela Graham mini eggs, which I'll be aren't they sweet? using on the tree. They're so sweet, aren't they? <laughs> they are. And our favourite decorations are so often by um, Elizabeth Harbour. If you watched our Christmas videos, yes. then you'll know that we adore her little wooden decorations. And um, we bought a lot for Christmas, but she also has some really pretty sort of summery, spring-like, Easter-themed Easter ones. For instance, we've got this little bird in a nest, or two oh. birds in a nest, which is so pretty. We've got a little lamb, <laughs> perfect for Easter. I love this rabbit that is in a so lettuce. That is so sweet. <laughs> it's just adorable. Yeah, we went a bit wild getting the ones we really loved, didn't we? We did. Well, it was so hard to choose. Yeah, it was. Between them, because there were so many we really we're loved. We're just going to put it all on the tree. Yes, yeah. we are. So I can't wait. And I thought whilst we were doing this, we, we could talk about some of our Easter Absolutely. traditions. Absolutely. Because you've always made Easter <laughs> so special. Thank you. Well, um, I love Easter. I love the celebration. And it was really important to me that, um, it, I think because it's very low key, isn't it? It's not like Christmas where you have so many expectations yeah. Yeah. and things try past you some as we go along you too. Can. Um, and what I was thinking was when you were a baby is that I want to make very happy memories for you. And at this point we were living in France. We had a um, quite small flat but it had a very useful sort of low table and mm -hmm. I um, realized that in France one of the things people really do is Easter trees I must admit we hadn't done it when I was a child an no. Easter tree um, but we had always had Easter eggs hidden in the garden oh so yes yeah that was definitely part of my traditions but the Easter tree was something I wanted to start with you and your joy when you, you know, I think your first Easter, you would have been about, oh, I want to say about seven months, and you were already able to pull yourself up. You walked at 10 months, so you weren't far away, but you sort of could go around the table holding on. <laughs> yeah. And, you know, if you were just in thrall with the <laughs> well, Easter Well, I've tree. always absolutely loved Easter. I think I got almost more excited about <laughs> Easter than I did Christmas <laughs> when I was little. And I still love it. I know. It's one of the best things. You, chocolate. Yeah. Got our, got yes, you always little, get. It wouldn't be Christmas bunnies. without a lint. I mean, Easter. <laughs> Yeah, it wouldn't be Christmas without a lint reindeer. It wouldn't be Easter without a lint bunny. We do <laughs> love, love the little floral ones. They're so pretty this year. It's so aren't pretty. They lovely? Yeah. It's going to be so. hard to resist those. But it things is. like, um, because it was very hard at that point to buy hot cross buns. I remember we drove all the way to Lyon because it was Marks <laughs> and Spencers there in those days to buy our hot cross buns for. Um, Good Friday, oh, we yes. start eating them then. We eat them on Good Friday um, and later usually. I'm not yes. one for having them all the year round. I know a lot of people do, but no, we like to save them. them as an Easter treat, yes. don't we? We do. And, you know, I think too, when I couldn't find when Marks and Spencers closed and when we were in the <laughs> States where we, we didn't have them, I used to make hot cross buns. The only thing I never did was that piped cross. I would always just snip with scissors. Oh, yes. I never have sort of thought it was worth like sort of fiddling around with flour and water <laughs> to try and make that that piping cross on things. But maybe I should have. But now I'm happy to buy them. Yeah, well, yeah. So 
so am I. And yeah. we should be having a Dean Reed special coming up on Friday. Exactly. It's a very clever dish for making the most of store-bought hot cross buns. Absolutely. <laughs> so look out yes. for that yes. later. And no, I think that was one of the first things we started. I think one of your first Easter presents was, um, must have been Spot's first Easter, you know, when you lived Oh, yeah. Wow, you did love oh, that. Oh, I love Spot. And then every year after that, I got into doing these rhyming couplets. Your, your dad's family <laughs> were very clever with that. Um, they would hide a main present. And then the children would have to follow the clues to find it. And you absolutely liked that. I did. That, I think you, you regretted in the end uh, defending slightly. yourself that challenge. Because I got more and more clever you? with it. And then, you know, when you're in a place that you've been in a couple of years, you're going to think, where on earth can I hide it that's different? Because you were old enough then to start <laughs> really getting into finding it. It had to be quite, you know, elaborate clues. And, and for, I remember so when well. you hid a little... Um, sort of doll's tea party set. Yes, exactly. In, in the oven. <laughs> oh, I know, in the oven, <laughs> yeah. Like, oh, and I remember I was worrying that your dad, who I told where I'd hidden it and all the rest of it, but he could be a bit absent minded, <laughs> might go and turn the oven on for some reason. <laughs> I was like watching like a hawk. <laughs> but it was always so. So fun doing that, and yes. I think we um, always had visitors. Or yes. Often we had visitors, like family coming yes. from England yeah. or from Canada. Yeah, and that made it a really special it time did. too. And do you remember that nearly always lamb was our featured dish yes. because we had yes. quite a lot of people, and I always yes. loved a leg of lamb at at Easter. I don't yes. think for just two of us I'll do that this year. I think we might have a chicken or something. Yes. yes. But well, do you remember? When we lived in France, the marvellous, actually, we'd go over the border into Switzerland, and it was near Audrey Hepburn's grave. It was just up the mountain from Audrey Hepburn's grave in. The so restaurant? Yes, restaurant. that restaurant. Oh, and they yes. would roast the lamb on this spit. Oh, that right. Absolutely delicious. Oh, I wish you could go. That. I yes, know, and I do. They had it was the most mouth watering. It was delicious. Oh, it was French amazing. don't overcook lamb, which is a bit. We found it a bit yes. hard when we first moved here. Yeah, because we kept wanting our lamb kind of rare. <laughs> yes, we did. We did mm. eat out. We did eat out a few Easter's. In we France. did. Yes. Um, and I always remember the weather as being gorgeous, gorgeous. and so looking we, out yeah. over the lake. Yes, you know, lake Geneva. I know. And you weren't too far with that restaurant from where, um, you know, where Fr um, Frankenstein, where they talked about oh, yes, that, that, that the chateau right. and yes, everything. Where, right where Mary the Shelley, or both the Shelleys were with Lord yes. Byron. Yes, exactly. Coming up with ghost stories yeah. and Mary Shelley yeah. started Frankenstein. Absolutely. Yes. I've got some photos of you peering out of the window in that chateau. Oh, really? I remember, yeah, I'll we'll have to see if we like, can find them so yes, that you can put them I up. Remember yeah. Those. Yes. yeah. And um, what else do I remember? There's a, well, I think vegetables too. I think there was usually minty yes. peas. There oh, was yes. usually, you know, um, the potatoes that were sliced so thinly that they did in sort of a stock in France and Switzerland quite often. Yeah, remember that. I do and also a Good that. Friday, we usually had fish, so we would often yes, go to that true. restaurant um, right on the lake that did fillet de perche. Yes, these tiny these little, little fish. perch fillets. Yes, yeah. and they they were so delicious oh, too. I remember they? the the French fries or chips that yes, oh, they were so thin, thin, so, so, so perfect. Thin. I never managed to make anything like that. This is looking stunning, by the way. I'm oh, not even watching you. while you're doing all this oh, beautiful work. Oh, her, her, um, her ornaments are so lovely. This one really took my eye because it's the little old woman who lived in a shoe and had yes, so lovely. many children. She didn't know what to do. I've always thought that was adorable. Yes, or well, somehow, um, I don't know, somehow nursery rhymes and children's stories and picture books. Come, you do have actually Easter yeah. somehow. Yeah. Well, look, I always bought you some sort of book. Always, yes, that's right. Probably one. It wasn't very elaborate, but and but the other thing I always bought you was either jewellery or china. Um, yes. As you got older, it tended to be Alex Munro. Yes, his necklace. My favourite. Um, yeah. Jeweller. Yeah. And well, I'm wearing. I'm wearing one of the things you bought me. 
that is um, Easter several present. Easter's yeah. ago. I don't know if I can show it on the camera. Let me move around a minute. Because it's so dainty, but it's, let's see if you can see that. There we go. If you can see, it's a little bunny ring. And I just absolutely love it. It's really adorable. It's always been just so lovely for this time of year. Yeah, so, so I bring it out. I can't remember, it was quite a few years ago. You a got long it time ago. Me, I think, but I bring one. it out every Easter, this yeah. one. Yeah, it gets its layering, doesn't it? Does, it does, and it's yeah. like the little sort of diamond chip or yeah. whatever it is. Yeah, um, it's a very tiny, tiny yes, diamond. Yes, yes. <laughs> that little dot is. But it's like a little Easter egg. It is. Yeah, adorable. <laughs> so, yes, I absolutely. They're really, they're really charming. And then we bought you. You collected um, Bramley Hedge because you got the books. Do you remember by Jill Barclay? Yes, I loved, and I collected Bramley Hedge China. The sort of tea years, set. Actually, it's sad years we right had now. to get rid of it. We I just go to a charity yeah, shop because I know I really do regret room. that. But yeah, when, one of our moves in London, we downsized and we just did not have room. And I had the whole tea set. I had the teapot and everything. I, yeah. I got rid of basically. But you had so it. many years. Yes. Of using it and I loving did. it. I did. And as so, a child, we used it almost every day. I do yes, think we did. Things, and we so set up a little it. seasonal display at home yes. often. Yes. And we'd sort of display the little like spring plate and spring tea cup yes. and saucer and yes. things like that. Yes. And I loved doing that when yes. I was little. And you'd put flowers and you yes. We actually do you remember in Long Island we had a hard time finding spring flowers like um daffodils and yes. tulips. They they the still do so well there. and California was the same. Yes, well yeah. the spring would be over very quickly, wouldn't it? It would. Then it would. Um, France was really well, lovely, oh, wonderful. Yes. Primroses everywhere. Oh yes, us. there were, yeah. which was really special. She Mills had beautiful one. florists. Mm -hmm. yeah. 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 That one. That's... Yes, we did. Um, that I've always remembered. They are amazing creations. They would do. Yes. But always we've tried to get some lovely. Branches. We were lucky. Um, Susie from Picked at Dawn helped us. Yes. Yeah, so we have some branches and some blossom. Yeah. To make our Easter tree, and yeah, we were able to get some from a lovely lady who has a flower farm. Yes. Um, very near to us. Yes. So we're so pleased to get these, and I think they're perfect. You could also use forsythia. We've used yes, that. Yes, definitely. Cat a lot, kins. Um, yeah, catkins, yeah, anything, anything really, really yes, that you it, can get. And I remember when I, I couldn't get fresh flowers, I think that must have been in a cold Easter in Long Island when we had snow. What I did was I got some um, oh, nice yeah, you silk get some ones. sort of nice fake silk yeah. cherry blossom branches yeah. and things like that. And, and use, use that as a yeah. as a little tree to hang things yeah. on. And I mean, that's nice too, in that you can use them every year. You can, you but it's them. something just, I mean, I think it's just lovely to have the, the fresh. And, yes, yeah. we've got a real soft spot for <laughs> fresh flowers. <laughs> yeah. that, that's not we a surprise. If you, if you and for it. me, this time of year, the, the, the daffodils, I actually um, love, if I can just, these lilies, the pink lilies. Oh, yeah. And my, I was talking to my sister and she said, oh, I don't like the smell of lilies. They're so overwhelming. And, and um, she, she associates them a lot with funerals. Whereas I was thinking of pink ones. I think of Milton Abbas, which was such a lovely oh, yes. um, place to go in Dorset, near where I lived in Dorset. Yeah. And we would... Um, in the abbey there. Yes. The yes, so there. often there was a wedding and you would go and the and scent... And they yeah, they'd have the most beautiful... Glorious flowers there often. if you're lucky enough to get to Dorset yes you must soon. go there yes you must go to Milton Abbas it's but lovely. we're going to oh, <laughs> we're going to keep going yeah. decorating this and we'll show you the finished result and our Easter tree is finished we are so pleased with it I said to mum I think this is one of the best we've ever done <laughs> I'm sure it is 
I thought, oh, we have far too many ornaments, but no. <laughs> no, <laughs> just fine. right. We'll get a few more next year. I think we could. They're just so pretty, aren't they? They really make it. Absolutely. Such a joyous thing to have. And I love the blossom and the branches. It all looks so pretty. I'll put a link to the Elizabeth Harbour decorations in the description box down below so that you can check them out too. But I'm so happy with our tree. I think it looks lovely. And our little lint bunnies waiting at the bottom. I'm looking forward to Easter Sunday. <gasps> Fabulous. Okay, so we're back. The tree is yes. done and we're so pleased we with it. We are delighted, <laughs> yes. But we also wanted to share some of our favourite books for Easter time. Yeah. And we had a lovely Easter surprise in the post today. Um, an artist that I know a little, Christopher Brown, is so sweet because he often sends at Easter time and at Christmas and last year he sent for my birthday a card or an original print of his and this is an Easter one and I think that it's just stunning. You just treasure his artwork so much. I do, I really treasure it and this has two Miranda on it, Happy Easter 21. Oh, and how lovely it is too. I think it's just beautiful. It is. He's so yeah. clever. I'll put a link to um, what he does and I don't know if he has a website but I think he's on St. Jude's or somewhere yes. like that. So yes. I'll link to it because his stuff is lovely yeah. and he's such a charming man as well. So that was such a sweet surprise and perfect timing that it arrived today. It is. It is. <laughs> yes. Um, yes, yes, so we so have a few books to chat some about. Some old, some not so old. <laughs> <laughs> All quite old. All really. quite old, really, that's true. <laughs> yes. Um, well, a lovely one that is so nice for Easter yes. is Noel Streckfield's Easter holiday book. She loved Christmas and Easter, didn't yes, she? Yes, she did. Yeah. She has a Christmas holiday book, but also an Easter holiday book. And this is an anthology of stories, not by her, but by a whole sort of range of people. Although yeah. this does include a remembrance of Noel Streckfield's own Easter holidays. Yes. That's how it starts, which is so lovely. But there are stories and um, thoughts from Ursula Moray Williams, Mary Treadgold, yeah. Monica Dickens, Leon Garfield, um, and a whole bunch of other writers. I, re I really like the one by um, Joyce Stranger. Oh. Very great. That's, I remember that one. This was a, a present for you, not this particular volume, but it was a present for you that we, I got when you were little. Yes. And we read it many times. Yes. 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 And... It's a really special one. Really so. hideous cover art, though. Yeah, it's a shame. <laughs> yeah. that the, the Christmas one isn't great no, either. No, I think it must be really seven could have done cheats, better. Were they? I, I think don't they know, but they it have was that a bit, look. bit <laughs> of an unfortunate yeah. cover choice. 74, yeah, no. I could kind of tell. Yeah. Not a great... No. <laughs> Not a great year for book covers, I guess. No, no, it wasn't great for women's clothes and hair. <laughs> they have styles either, as I remember it. And then I love this book called Admiral's Walk by Kitty Barn. And it starts just before Easter, the very beginning of April. And although they mention Easter, there isn't a sort of special Easter section in the book, but it is the right time of year and it's a lovely springtime read. Yeah. It's about a mother and daughter who move to a wonderful house in the countryside mm -hmm. and they start their own um, sort of 
like selling garden where they sell flowers and fruits and vegetables and it's a charming story and there's a village fete and a lot about village life and things and it's just such a nice spring read. And, and that title, Amaryl's Walk. Yes. I mean I think it's lovely, Kitty Barnes, so clever, that's a wonderful title. Yes, oh, I love I love that one. Yeah. And then there are quite a few stories that tend to be mm. set in the Easter holidays. Mm -hmm. So Antonia Forrest did a couple, The Ready-Made the Ready Family, which is yeah. one that's just been released by Girls Gone By. I'm still waiting for my copy to arrive. Yeah. Um, but also The Marlowe's and The Traitor, which is another story about the Marlowe family. And I love her books because they're a mix of school stories about the Marlowe's and what they get up to in the school time, at least with the girls because they go to an all-girls school. But she also wrote a lot of holiday books about the Marlowe sisters and their brothers and the adventures they got up to and some of them are set over the Easter holidays and this is one of them, The Marlowe's and The Traitor, which is a Girls Gone By book. Sadly now out of print I think this one, but very good. Very worth looking out for. Yes. Yes. And then a few. Yes, again. Other sort of adventure stories. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. At Easter time, Alison's Easter Adventure by Sheila Stewart. I wish this one had a bit more of an Easterish cover, but it's got very Scottish cover. Yes, those are always Scottish. Yeah, yes. she was Scottish. Yes, wasn't I think she? she was. And they're, they're generally set in Scotland. This is set in Scotland, and it's all about adventures they yeah. get up to, sort of in the Highlands. And I don't know if you can see, but I love the kilts that they're wearing. <laughs> really great, yeah. that one. So, yes, a good sort of Easter adventure story. Another Kitty Barn book, The Secret of Sand Hills. I'll hold that up for you too. This was actually originally called The Easter Holidays. Or some, was Easter it? Holidays, that's it's right. Easter Holidays, mm. yeah. And I never found a copy of Easter Holidays no, for the dust jacket, no. even when you were a child. I yeah, find. we've been looking for that. Long, but... long time. In fact, we, we looked for <laughs> books for a long time. Some of these are before Miranda was born that I was looking for some of these books, I think, you know, it's a long time. Um, but The Secret of Sand Hills, it was later republished as. And again, this is a sort of adventure story set in the Easter holidays. I have to show you the frontispiece to this one because it's charming. I think this one is set sort of during World War II or something yeah. too. There's something about like a spy or something yes. they think is a spy <laughs> on the British coast and yes but they also stumble across this isolated little house it's and it's absolutely adorable you can see it there on the frontispiece I just love that illustration so another good Easter adventure story <laughs> and then these, well, we both have such mm. fond memories of these books. Yeah. The Country Bunny and The Little Gold Shoes by Dubose. Is that how you say her think, name? Yeah, I think so. Or Dubose. Yes. Well, Dubose Hayward and pictures by Marjorie Hack. Flack, I think. Her is name it is. Flack? Yeah, Flack. Oh, it's hard to tell yeah. you. Yeah, Flack. Yeah. And you read this to me <laughs> so many times, so many Easter's growing up. Yeah. And oh my goodness, it's still one of my very favourite Easter stories. I'll film a little cutaway so you can see the illustrations inside because I love them and they're somehow sort of imprinted on me. Yes. These yeah. illustrations. I absolutely love it, but it's about um, a young rabbit who wished and wished to become the Easter Bunny but she was told that her legs weren't long enough and the jackrabbits could run far and fast enough. It's quite an early feminist it book is. actually. It is. It yes, is. Yes, because you know only the male rabbits could be the yeah. Easter Bunnies but she proves them wrong. Yes, and <laughs> as a huge family. <laughs> a really huge family. So she, working mum that really does it all in this one. <laughs> Absolutely, and she trains those kids so well, they can do yeah, everything. they do everything in the house. You'll it's have to, when story. we do tea reads this week, you'll have to read yes, a bit. Yes, I, I will. Yeah. And then another 
picture yeah. book that you always read to me at Easter time. Yeah. Make Way for Ducklings by Robert McCloskey. And this is all set in Boston and the <laughs> illustrations of Boston are amazing. I actually recognised Boston <laughs> when I went for the first time two summers ago and I walked all around it and it looked familiar because of this yeah. book. <laughs> it's not changed that much. It's not it? changed that much and all the like the sort of central bit near the park and yes. it's just so beautiful and again it shows lovely illustrations in here and it's about a little duck family who um, have trouble navigating the city <laughs> yes. but they, they enlist the help of a policeman yes. <laughs> and it's just really really charming I love so, reading those two picture books to you and, yeah. and you know they were just always a joy yes if you do something like an Easter basket or something or spring basket with your children these are lovely additions mm. and then you've got a couple of I've got a couple of favorites of mine that I wanted to share not particularly because they're this one has Easter chapters in it it's Mara Kay's Masha which I think I've um mentioned oh, a few times up. thank you yes I think we have we have spoken about this book a few yes. times it's and a it's favorite. Um, it is a favorite unfortunately it's out of print and very hard to find now yes but we like to give you a challenge <laughs> <laughs> worth looking out for yeah for sure. for sure and you might be able to get it from a library if you're lucky yes. yes yeah um and this one is set in saint petersburg mainly and um after um napoleon's defeat in 1812 but it's really about masha who's a young girl and she goes off to the i don't know how you say it Smoley Institute, it's a girls school in yes. St. Petersburg yeah. and it is charming and it starts right at the very end of March so it's a very good one if you can find a copy to read this time yeah. and there's yeah. an Easter Bazaar there is an Easter Bazaar there. yes. there's, um, they talk about dying Easter eggs yes. it's lovely yeah. it absolutely and it's just is. such yeah, a charming read it is and then um, this one is Marjorie Sharp it's the flowering thorn yeah. I like that one very much too. It's set in the late 1920s, I think 1929, and yes. it's about um, a young woman who um, ends up adopting a child. But again, it starts, I think it's actually, she actually dates it from one of the early pages. She says, yes, they were lined with two long mirrors between which at about a few minutes past six on the 20th of March, <laughs> 1929, Leslie stood adjusting the angle of a small black hat. Oh. Um, and so, you know, I like to read these because they're appropriate to the start time. this yeah, time yeah. of year. Yes. Yeah. Oh, those are lovely. I don't think this one's has come out as a Dean Street Press one. No, it no. hasn't. This publisher, I think it was an American publisher yeah, called Open Road, Open Road yeah. Media, openroadmedia.com. I bought these a few years ago. The Lutyens and Rubenstein bookshop in London. Yeah. They had a few Notting of these. Hill. Yeah, Notting Hill. Mm. And I don't know if they'd still have them, but they sometimes got in more American books, yeah. didn't they? I mean, Marjorie Sharp is British, yes. but she was very popular in the States and they have republished some of them. So if you are in the States, you might be able to find some of these. Yeah. But anyway, that's our little Easter special. Yes. Oh, you had a surprise oh, for me. Goodness me. <laughs> oh, I, I do have a that. surprise and I almost forgot it. Well, I have to confess, this should have been given to you years ago. I thought I'd lost it. Last night, I was going through all my old x-rays. I was thinking, oh, do I really have to keep these? And then when I looked inside, lo and behold, I found something that was actually an Easter present for you from some years ago. How I really must have just shoved it in there at some point thinking, oh, it'll keep it flat. And then, and then forgot where I put it. Oh, well, I love it. So I think, I think I, you used this bag at Christmas. Yes, it's a very good one. <laughs> it's but I couldn't go shopping yeah. for you, so I had to oh, try and find yeah. something. And I was so happy so because sweet. I was thinking it would have to be chocolate. Now we can <laughs> share the chocolate. <laughs> oh, let's see. So, oh, that's so beautiful. It's called A Garden Picnic and it's by the uh, female British oh. artist Dorothy Fitchu, who lived between 1895 oh, to 1976. So 
um, I just saw this on an online wow. sale thing years ago now oh, and thought Miranda would just so love this it. and now this reminds me of when we go out in the garden. Yes, it looks just like that. Well, almost. Yeah. So it's definitely that feel, even the flask. Even the flask. We have our yes. flask of tea. Yeah. And the little blanket and the flowers, the little table. It's just like us. Well, I thought you oh, might like it. Happy I love Easter it. Oh, Sunday. thank you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, that's so lovely. I'm so glad you found it. So am I. <laughs> I can't tell you how happy oh. I was. It's like, what's it? And then it's like... <gasps> <laughs> and in amongst your old x-rays and yes. medical records. Yes. Good <laughs> Far too many of them, but I, I just have always thought, well, I better not throw them out. You never know, do yeah, you? Yeah. But then I thought, do I really need them all? <laughs> well, how lovely that you found this. Yes. And two art surprises. Well, uh, yes, that, that was something I obviously didn't know. <laughs> that's so. That's amazing. Thank you so much. Well, we'll see you again on Friday, so do join in with our tea reads because we'll be sharing some little Easter extracts from some of our favourite books and, like I said, doing a special dish as well. And so we'll see you then and I hope that you're having a lovely week. Goodbye. Bye-bye.